Let's welcome the second speaker, Rajesh. He's coming from IBM. He's going to talk about the big data system for analyzing risky procurement entities. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you, Devi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Rajesh Kumar Ravi. Uh, I work in IBM uh, Commerce Research Group with an IBM Research in Yorktown. Um, I am the senior software engineer on this project and also the software architect. The primary author, Amit, uh, who's the research scientist, couldn't make it today, so I just made it in behalf of him. Uh, the other authors, uh, Bruce Graves is uh, one of the procurement uh, business consultant and uh, leader in the space. Uh, he has just retired after uh, 35 years on IBM, uh, well, you know, the last few months. Uh, Marcus is a uh, senior um, manager and uh, distinguished uh, research engineer at, uh, in our group. And Gopi Krishnan is another engineer who has contributed a lot to this project. So today I'm going to talk about uh, you know, uh, a, a project that we developed within IBM, and, uh, which is for detecting fraud within the procurement space. Um, so it's really risk of fraud in a procurement space. Um, Fraud is everywhere, so I'll just give a little bit of introduction to the fraud in the procurement area because it's a little different from the type of fraud that we see in uh, banking sector. Um, so I'll just uh, give a little bit of overview, a little bit of uh, the analytics that we built into the tool, and also uh, uh, if uh, if the internet connection is working, I'll slightly show a small demo, otherwise I'll just show some screenshots. Um, so fraud is everywhere. And every business loses money to fraud. And uh, this could be because of, uh, you know, occupational fraud, things like, you know, employees cheating on, uh, you know, travel reimbursement or suppliers, uh, rigging price or, you know, or, you know, the traditional model of, you know, credit card fraud and whatnot. So, this, so overall, every year, $3.5 trillion is lost to fraud and, uh, and only 3% of that fraud is actually found through audits. And within the procurement space, it's extremely difficult to pinpoint which suppliers to audit. And, um, and they, in fact, before we did this project for IBM, it took them about one to three months to come up with top five suppliers that they want to do audit in a given country. So that's a very long time just to arrive at you know, a few suppliers that they want to actually go and audit. Uh, but with this project, uh, with the different analytics and uh, concepts that we have incorporated, we are able to do this every day. Like we are able to give a high list of suspect suppliers or, or invoices or purchase orders every single day in every single transaction. So that's a huge leap, uh, almost 80% improvement in our uh, performance. So uh, what else is happening in the procurement space? Um, U.S. government is cracking down on FCPA regulations. And this is closely related to corporate compliance and uh, procurement. Because many of the channel, you know, money that is being given as bribe is actually channeled through uh, you know, third party suppliers and so on. So and this money is actually sent through invoices and purchase orders, fake invoices, things like that. So it's very important, uh, you know, multinationals especially, have better processes and stronger processes to really prevent uh, you know, these kind of effects happening, uh, uh, the underbelly of the organization, well, you know, and, and corporate has no specific controls. So a tool that can really uh, look at it uh, with some level of intelligence is, is really becoming a huge necessity in this space, uh, which has been, you know, more or less neglected for many years. Um, so how did we go about doing this? So. First of all, there was no specific taxonomy created when we started this project two years back. So then nobody really knew what are the different types of frauds that is going on uh, within the procurement area. So we actually have to start right from the scratch. Uh, though I have to specify that there are many companies, and including IBM, who have uh, a comprehensive list of different types of checks that you can do from a process point of view. However, uh, they don't have any intelligence. It's just uh, you know, just checklist. Have you you know submitted the receipts, so on and so, so forth, right? But it's it doesn't do any comprehensive intelligence into it. So some really an, uh, an auditor has to go through every single data and determine what is it, whether it's a fraud or risk or whatever it is. 
So eventually we came up with these four different categories, fraudulent vendors, suppliers who are, you know, try to give low quality products or, you know, inflate the price and so on. And then collusion among vendors, that is, uh, you know, if there are three suppliers for a specific product, they try to collude between themselves and then set a price at very high, uh, you know, benchmark and, uh, they, you know, you bid process, they'll, you know, it's a win-win for everyone and they cycle through, you know, every year, uh, one of those three suppliers would win the bid and so on. So this kind of fraud goes on. Uh, collision between employees and vendors, this is very prevalent and very difficult to actually catch because, uh, I mean, in fact, almost, I would say 100%, but, but maybe there are a few fluke cases, but 100% of the cases are actually found by other you know, colleagues, you know, be giving a tip on somebody else doing a fraud. So that's pretty much how it is being done so far. So it's very, very difficult to find these kind of frauds. And uh, fraudulent employees themselves, so they create their own, you know, supplier entities because they just have access to the whatever the procurement systems. They create their own enterprise, fake enterprise, and submit bills on behalf of them, and then just send it to their bank account or their spouse or or not. So this kind of uh, is basically broadly where we are looking at. Uh, our solution is trying to address some some of the fraudulent vendors, uh, the collision between employees and vendors. And, uh, and some of the fraudulent employees. Uh, so we're still building more capabilities as we do uh, this and uh, we build more analytics and uh, you know, try to bring it into the tool. Uh, so how do we go about doing this? So we built, uh, came up with a, a more comprehensive way to look at this. It starts with data collection uh, because that's where all the evidence resides. And typically uh, so far, Traditionally, organizations have been looking at internal structured data, for example, invoices, purchase orders, and, um, and RFQs, and so on. These are all structured data. But they have not been able to leverage emails. If anybody you know, know Enron, there's a whole corpus of emails with lots of keywords, sugar, and things like that. Uh, if we had had the access to the email and we have are, we are monitored it, we would have known many of these uh, you know, fraudulent things going on. Uh, but that's that's that was not that was unheard of so far in this in this particular space, but we are trying to add those kind of text analytics, emails, um, you know, other U.S. government uh, you know data sources like they have their own federal debar list, uh, they 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 release a denied party lists and so on. So all these information is brought into the system, uh, along with uh, the proprietary data that we have, like you know whatever the local corporation data it is. Um, and then we, we try to build a new set of text analytics, which is specifically focusing on unstructured data. Right? And, and we'll give you a little bit more examples of what type of things that we're looking up. Uh, but to, just to wrap up this, uh, so then we, what we do is we do the text analytics, then we do you know, the standard business rules. So there is a plenty of business rules available. Um, there are many uh, you know, organizations and consulting agencies who have like a list of 1,800 rules that they would check uh, before they would approve an invoice or so on. Uh, these are pretty standard practices. Uh, we do that also. In addition to uh, the text analytics and some statistical outlier detection and so on. And we also have enhanced these outlier detections. Typically, the type of uh, statistical outlier detection they do is uh, very simple uh, three sigma rule kind of stuff, right? So that isn't enough because it, reduces, it creates a lot of false positives. Uh, so we have to improve on that and you know create much better models. Uh, we also have a work in process which is uh, bringing social media network analysis. Uh, really try to connect the dots. Okay, there is a um, you know somebody. Uh, once we know like one requester, like the person who is placing the order to a supplier, is producing or putting in more orders than usual, then we can go into the social media if we know about it and then try to track if this is somehow, if the person is related to the supplier in some way or so on, so forth, right? So or is there some kind of connection going on, right? So those kind of analysis could be done. So that's an important new addition that we are bringing into the capability of this overall tool. And, uh, and then we, we use weightings. So, okay, you have all these rules, you have all these information coming in. We have to somehow make sense of it we use a scoring method, obviously, which is pretty common in the industry, except that uh, we try to do some multiplicative model, which is a little bit easier to uh, comprehend uh, from, a, uh, from a risk analysis point of view. 
Uh, but the key here is uh, we, we, we have also incorporated a machine learning on that weight importance itself. So that evolves over time. Uh, initially, we started with subject matter experts setting some values and telling, okay, this, is, this rule is important than this one and so on. Uh, or, um, you know, or the outlier is more important than some, you know, some simple rule. Uh, so, but then over time, the machine actually learned and got a better weighting of what is important and what is not. We use some unsupervised learning uh, methods to basically uh, ex exploit uh, the weights itself, as well as uh, you know the uh, understanding any suspicious patterns that come out of the different uh, rules that trigger. I'll just show a small example a little bit later. Um, we also, uh, oh, sorry, the unsupervised learning is for actually uh, for the emerging suspicious patterns, and then the supervised learning is actually the feedback loop that helped us learn that weighting a little better. And we also have uh, you know investigation alert triggers and things like that. So ability to do investigation within the tool itself, or send it to better uh, case management systems and stuff like that. So, so overall, this is basically our approach. Um, we have uh, incorporated some uh, uh, interpretable online learning based algorithms or uh, risk scores. Basically, interpretable means the risk score is uh, not arbitrarily you know, growing over time as you add more rules, um, but uh, really you know, focus on like a zero to one and then make it more interpretable. I'll just give a, I'll show an example. We also have um, a collision detection based on RFQ data. This is where we see that uh, you know, RFQ is the request for code, like any, you know, before you go and procure a supplier to your organization, you would do an RFQ. The suppliers would get back to you with some, you know, code and things like that. So here there's a lot of data about who the supplier is, who's the person is, and who's requesting from uh, your own organization and so on. All that, uh, when we see some patterns, we then couple it with social data to try to figure out uh, if there is something, some connection is going on. Text analytics, this has really proved very valuable for us because it really brought out new patterns of uh, uh, fraud behaviors or risk behaviors. Uh, and then even co-occurrence, this is very interesting because you know we found that over time, like when A, B, C, D events happen, uh, we always see like E or F uh, happen. Uh, so, uh, so this was a very powerful way to even predict, okay, when we see these patterns, what is the next one? Uh, some sample list of uh, you know different types of uh, you know review factors that we are looking for or the rules that we are looking for some of them are very uh, very simple things like the supplier is not registered in any you know official database things like that but some of them are more comprehensive in terms of analytics that goes behind it um, so the the weight itself or the scoring itself is uh, computed by uh, you know a factor of a weight and a confidence. The weight is something that initially we selected like based on the subject matter experts. The confidence is how confident this is uh, something that is going to be of uh, importance to us. And when you multiply that, we get an impact of that review. A review factor is uh, one of these rules. It could be a analytical output, like it says the the outlier is too much or whatever it is. But that's one review factor for us. It doesn't matter if it's a rule or a very comprehensive uh, analytics or whatever it is. So that's a rule for us and how important it is. So we try to compute this impact by weight and confidence. And these are brought together uh, by a simple naive's uh, and a naive based kind of a model or a, or a birth rate paradox model, right? The, the essence of this is that, um, you know, you don't look, just look at one incidence in its uh, in itself, but you look at a connection of incidents are happening, uh, events happening, and then try to come up with some kind of a risk of that. So the good example is, uh, you hear uh, you know your neighbors fighting in the night. You don't think too much of it. In the middle of the night, you hear a pop. You don't think much of it. But in the night, you know the next day morning, you see your neighbor dragging something heavy and putting it in the car trunk. Now something clicks, okay? All these three events are somehow connected, right? <laughs> and you get suspicious. And that's exactly what it is doing, and it's doing in a way of uh, setting these as some kind of probabilities from zero to one. So it gives the higher the score, the better it is. And it's more interpretable, and this is really what we came up with. Uh, to conclude, so we built some framework. So because, you know, whether we are monitoring a supplier or an invoice 
or a or a purchase order or an RFQ or a specific request are within the organization. It doesn't matter. The data set is more or less same, right? We want to bring in the same data set, but somehow uh, you know evaluate all these different entities and then create a real good comprehensive view of what the organization looks like uh, in terms of risk. Um, we have a, a re developed lots of advanced visualizations and uh, really impactful reporting because this is one of the biggest pain areas in this particular space because many of our uh, you know procurement officers and compliance officers they are dealing with tons of data and um, and they have no way to collect all of them and see in one place and that really really helps them and this is one of the things that they tell please whatever you do just give us some way to access the data in a much more simpler way so we built some visualizations and we built a very simple reporting platform that that allows them to give a so you see the top uh, uh, suppliers there listed by score uh, it's very small here but um, but you see that uh, then the, the user can click on that and then they can see uh, where the risk is coming from who what are the different uh, rules that triggered uh, that really led us to be feel suspicious about this supplier and further down there is uh, you know all the evidences the invoices the profile whatever that we found is all listed you know one by one so they can just make the determination right there on the tool. Uh, okay, I think I'm running out of time, so I'll just cover one more. Uh, just a overview. Uh, this is the, so for this particular project, we chose a more of an hybrid model uh, with cloud and traditional enterprise data warehouse, everything combined, because there is a, a huge unstructured uh, data that we have to look at. And we have, we also run a lot of uh, you know machine learning algorithms and you know searches and things like that text searches. So all that is running here in Hadoop. We also have a lot of structured data that we bring in. Uh, for now, it's all in DB2, and we use the information server to integrate all of this into a single package. Yeah. So that's pretty much <laughs> what I have. Thank you. Any questions? When when one uses uh, a machine learning to weight uh, a rule-based uh, systems, uh, there's a huge risk of overfitting to find exactly what you've seen in the past. How do you overcome that? Um, okay, so that's <laughs> that's a really good question. Uh, I can attempt to answer it because our, the, the machine learning guy is really Amit who, who developed the model. Uh, so the way we see it is, I think it's uh, the way that he built it is like uh, it uses some kind of asymmetric model. So it doesn't react to every single feedback. It looks for a certain uh, threshold of feedbacks to come in before we, we, we kind of adjust the weights into the system. That's kind of the high level uh, you know information that I know of uh, that how it works, uh, so that it doesn't you know create any kind of uh, sudden you know jumps in the score or uh, you know it provides more stability in how it, the system evolves over time. Uh, more details you can I mean I can give you a bit detail. You can provide. And a couple of questions. Uh, one is how large is the data size they used for the system, and the other is how do you determine the weights and the confidence of those uh, different entities. Yeah, so uh, the data size for uh, for this one, um, just the invoices alone, like there are for, you know, four million plus invoices in a single year. And um, and there is email, social media data, that's, that would, uh, it, it goes into few terabytes. It's not pretty huge at this point because we're just piloting it, but we expect it to grow. Um, there is also purchase orders and other kind of stuff. So these mm -hmm. are, will be in another uh, few terabytes, so, but it's not that huge. So, uh, so, so currently, how, how much is the, is the weight of the social networks uh, analysis in your uh, system? Sorry, can you yeah, so you did the social network analysis, right? You said terabytes of data. So how much, I wonder how much is that, uh, how much of a role that is playing uh, in your system so this is like we are just building that model to bring it into that it, it, but it provides a very valuable role in the sense that we were able to find uh, like like this is right now inter not integrated into the system itself but what we did was as i mentioned uh, we profiled certain requesters or patterns and then we took that data and then looked only for them in the social media data instead of the whole 
uh, or the corpus of uh, you know requesters or data that we have, and from that we were able to infer some uh, relationships between uh, uh, you know the particular requester and uh, you know some suppliers and so on. So we were able to create better case uh, as an uh, as a as a add-on to this uh, key solution, but uh, we plan to bring this in as part of the main solution itself. Yes, uh, question, yeah, question here. Oh, yeah, the final question. So what's a more example, uh, a more complex use case of something that you would detect, like maybe there's a large project that goes over a year and it's got 100 transactions and there's cost overruns. Um, and so it's not something that one transaction will stand out, it's more the context of all the different things going on. Right. And then what information do you do give to an investigator? Just to say this is risky isn't so much as pointing out, um, you know, by these five subcomponents um, is what makes it seem unusual or suspicious. Right, so, uh, you know, in that, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't show the demo, uh, but you, you see these things, it, it basically lists the most critical review, you know, the risks that came up. Some of them are pretty complex, like in terms of, Looking at clip level, you know, like there is a clip level. They, you know, suppliers will try to put it below that, so it gets automatically approved. Uh, there is, uh, you know, invoice numbers. They generate fake invoice numbers, and so on. When all these are combined together, right? So and and really, this risk score tries to tell you, tell the user, like the the, the investigator, that this is more important than other one, right? And that this risk score evolves over time and becomes bigger and bigger if if that is a clear case of uh, we find like there are more cases where this particular review factor it plays a crucial role so that's how we try to tell them other than list everything you know down there just what we found is you know that review score is going to tell them that this is the smoking gun so can you like click on that score and get the document yes so you can see everything below that i can show you offline right yeah Please join me to thank Rajas again. Thank you. Thank you very much.